Thomas. Hey, congratulations for Ghosts of the Ozarks. Thank you so much, Nick. Thank you so much. It all, it always, uh, it's a wonderful thing to uh, blend, uh, you know, the Western and horror supernatural genre together. So we'll, we'll take that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, hats off to, to Jordan and Matt for, you know, having the initial spark of an idea that led to this crazy world. It's so fun. So, so let's ask that uh, question. What uh, initially attracted you to uh, be a part of this project? Uh, you know, we did a short film of the movie four years ago, maybe, uh, four and a half years ago. Um, and I just met Matt and Jordan for the first time. And, and they said, you know, we're doing this short film based on this idea we have. And um, we want to put in a doctor, a black doctor in like the 1860s in Arkansas, in the Ozarks. And I was like, what? And then they actually went and like did research and found examples of, you know, historical figures, doctors, black who existed during that period. And I was like, wow, that's really cool. Great, I'll do your short film, sure. And then as the movie world grew, I was like, this could be the greatest acting challenge anyone's ever given me. And as terrifying as it was, because I will tell you honestly, I was so scared. Um, but you know, sometimes those are the moments when you have to lean in. You know, I so said, you can't, you can't back away from this. You'll regret it forever if if you let fear uh, keep you from doing it. He's just such a a complex character and so completely different from most of the movie than anything anyone's ever asked me to do. I mean, that's a, that is a historical research that uh, we're, we're discovering uh, that, uh, you know, um, blacks make up a one out of four during the Western period uh, for mm -hmm. cowboys and such. Yeah. And, and it's presenting in all, all the recent Western movies. Oh well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the harder they fall, and you know, I, I was watching that, and I was like, "Yeah, great, we're yeah, more black cowboys, please, more." You know, we were there. That's right. <laughs> so, so in in the case for uh, playing, you know, James Doc here, um, what? How, how did you get into a character, especially in that uh, horror genre, and being a you know a professional <laughs> during during that time period? Um, you know, I, I tell people all the time that um, there were a series of things, because for me with acting, I can meet a character where they are, I'll learn as much as I can about them, I'll make decisions about who I think they are. Um, and with James, the sort of added bonus of him was, when we started this movie, we were three months into the pandemic. Um, George Floyd had just been murdered. Black Lives Matter was erupting all across this, all across the country. Uh, I personally, you know, like, you know, as a working actor with a mortgage, all of a sudden, every job I had went away. Um, you know, I would, my parents live an hour from me and I went to my parents' house and I was kind of just sitting there like, I don't know what to do. The world has just gone topsy-turvy. And when I got to set three months later to film this movie, the big revelation I had was that's where James is in his own world, everything he knows has been turned upside down and turned upside down to the point where a f always lifelong free black man from the North would go to the South because his uncle said, it's gonna be great for you here. That's how bad things have gotten for him where he is, you know? And that's how much faith he has to have that there's something better coming. And that is, I felt like what I was going through uh, in real life. So I just married the two. And by the end of the movie, because we filmed it kind of in order, um, you know, I know the, the climactic moments of the movie were filmed last for me. And by that point, even I had healed myself. So it was kind of a nice journey for, for James and for me. I guess the uh, overall discovery is that there's no such thing as real utopia in the end. No, no, there's always, there's always something, you know. Um, what is the thing that's keeping the utopia safe? You know, people move to certain neighborhoods to be safe, but what are the things that are keeping that neighborhood safe? You know, uh, is it a wall? Is it a gate? Is it, you know, is it, is it a security force? Is it a police force? Like there's always something that's required, some sacrifice required for that kind of, that kind of peaceful living. And how, how do they handle that set production of create, you know, creating the, that village in the Ozarks and, um, you know, with the buildings and getting into that costume. Did, did that make you feel like you transported in time? 
it, you know, a Jordan, hats off to Jordan Long, who built the town. Jordan, his father, uh, one of our other crew members and best friends, Aaron Krush, and then uh, another guy named Matt. I mean, these four humans moved hundreds of tons of earth and built the out the exterior of this town. And the first day I showed up, went to my costume fitting, saw all the beautiful costume pieces that Brianna and her team assembled for us. And they walked me on the set so I could see it. And I walked in through a back door into Torb's bar. And it's this beautiful two-story structure they've built. And then they walked me out the front door of the bar and I was instantly in 1868 in, in a whole different world. And you couldn't see any modern anything, excuse me, because the, they built walls and things around it. And I was like, well, you've done 80% of my job for me because you've created a world that I can't help but completely get immersed in, which is great. So I just had to go home and learn my lines at that point. Um, you know, they had done a lot of the work for me. And, uh, and how was the con confrontation with these uh, supernatural creatures per, per se in the dark? I mean, that must have been uh, quite an experience. That was quite the experience. That was quite the experience. Um, you know, all of, all of the elements that have to come together. And we were, I think it was like three or four o'clock in the morning. Uh, one of the first times I met the supernatural elements, uh, and we'd had a long day and we were in the middle of the forest and, you know, and you just, I just looked at it and I was like, oh, wow. Like, okay, we are making a movie, you know? Um, there are moments throughout, like when I saw the town for the first time, when I saw the supernatural ghost for the first time, when I, I was like, oh my goodness gracious, we're doing this. Like my friends had a vision and they made it happen. And here we are and holy crap, like, Phil Morris is here and Tim Blake Nelson is here and David Arquette is here and Angela Bettis is here. <laughs> you know, like, are we, are we dreaming? If we are, don't wake me up, please. Great. Well, let, Thomas, let, let me ask you one last question. And, and I want, and I want to say it's probably a no, but did you ever had that urge to sing along with uh, Tim Blake Nelson on, in that song? <laughs> the answer is yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> I, um, I'm still trying to learn the words, uh, I think it's just great. I remember uh, the first time Matt Glass played that song for us. I was like, I mean, this is great. What the heck? And then, and then Tim did such a great job of singing it. And, and I love that it plays over the end credits as well. So it's just one last time to get right in your brain. Uh, and then there's a moment in the song where he kind of like, like scats a little bit. And one of my favorite things is that in the closed captioning, I guess the closed captioner couldn't figure out what he was saying. And it just says Torb scats. And that to me is just like, just a really fun way to end a movie. Um, yeah. So the answer is yes, shockingly. I would, you know, we'll have to do a duet at some point, Tim and myself. Then I will certainly listen to that. <laughs> Thank you very much, Thomas. Thank you. Can't wait for your next project. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.